Hello everyone. Um, so in this video, I'm going to finish chapter seven, as I mentioned before in class. So uh, the last session that we talked about chapter seven was um, lecture 29 on April 1st. And the last topic that we talked about in um, chapter seven was conditioning by, um, let me see what was the last one. It was conditioning two random variables by an event. So today I'm going to start with um, section 7.4, that is conditioning by a random variable. So this is section 7.4, and it is conditioning by another random variable. So the difference between conditioning by a random variable and conditioning by an event in, is that before we had, for example, probability of x given y, now we're going to add x given, for example, a, that in which a was an event, but here we're going to have probability, for example, of x given y. So in this one, the difference is that x and y are both random variables, so we don't have any more events here. And um, how we can define it, it's exactly the same definitions as we have for um, discrete and continuous random variables. So now I'm talking about um, the discrete random variable. So in discrete random variable, we know that the PMF is equal to, for example, PMF of x is equal to probability of x equal to um, some value of x. So here I'm going to have probability of x equal to some value of x given y equal to some value of y. So this will be conditioning by a random variable. Again, see here I'm conditioning by y in which y is a random variable and x of course is a random variable. So um, for the definitions of this probability of x given y, let's go back to the um, basic definition of a conditional probability that we had in chapter one, that was probability of an event given another event, A given B. And we remember that it was probability of A, B over probability of B. Now, I'm going to just use the same definition, but here I'm going to have both uh, my events are two random variables. So, so if I want to do probability of x given y, of x given y, I'm going to have the joint PMF of x, y, of x and y, over probability of y, so over PMF of y. And if I want to find probability of y given x, of y given x, I'm going to have, so the joint probability doesn't have any difference here. We're going to have pxy of x and y for both of them. But since here we have given x, then the denominator will be px of x, which is the pmf of x. All right, so let's do an example. So this is example um, 7.15. So in this example, it is given the joint PMF of X and Y as a graph that you can see here. So we have random variable Y and random variable X, and we were going to have one and 4. So these are the given information in the question. And for x equal to 4, I'm going to have four different possibilities. So all of the ones with x equal to 4, they have the joint PMF of 1 over 16. For the ones that x is 3, we're going to have 1 over 12. Then 1 over 8. 
and 1 over 4. Okay, so here they ask us to find probability of y given x. So we know that probability of y given x is equal to the joint PMF of x and y. So it's PXY of x and y over px of x why px of x because it is given x so when it is given x i have to divide it by px of x so what do i have to do first here so what i have available is pxy of x and y that is this graph that you can see here so this is pxy of x and y so what i have to find is px of x which is the marginal pmf of x okay so let's find the marginal PMF of X. So if I write PX of X, and then I have to write all the possibilities for X. So what we have here available for X is X equal to 1, X equal to 2, X equal to 3, and X equal to 4, and otherwise. So for otherwise, I'm going to have 0. Now, for x equal to 1, if I look at all the possibilities in which x is 1 with all different y's, I only have 1 over 4. So 1 over 4 will be the PMF of x when x is equal to 1. When x is equal to 2, if you look here, I'm going to have 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8. So technically, I have 2 multiplied by 1 over 8, and that is 1 over 4. Then when x is equal to 3, we have to look at this point, which we have 1 over 12. So I have 3, 1 over 12. So 3 multiplied by 1 over 12. Again, I'm going to have 1 over 4. And when x is equal to 4, we have to look at this point in which x is equal to 4. And then I'm going to have 4 multiplied by 1 over 16, which is again 1 over 4. So if I want to simplify px of x, I can write px of x is equal to, it's always equal to 1 over 4 when x is 1, 2, 3, or 4, and 0 otherwise. So I found px of x. Now, what I have to find is I need to find py given x, so probability, the condition of probability of y given x of y given x. So we said that it is equal to pxy of x and y over px of x. What is px of x? It is 1 over 4 in uh, all the possibilities for x. So that is 1 over 4 and this will be equal to 4 pxy of x and y. Okay, now you may say we need to have some um, like numerical result for this uh, p probability of y given x but you have to realize that we're going to have different x's so we may have different x's given at different times not time i by time i don't mean t i mean at different like samples we're going to have different x's that are given and then i have to find probability of y for that specific x that is given what i mean is that for example when x is equal to 1, I know that x is the one that is given. So x equal to 1 is given. So if I want to find probability of y given x of y given x, where x is equal to 1, that will be equal to probability of y given 1 of y given 1. And that would be equal to pxy of x and y, where x is equal to 1. So what is pxy? Um, of x and y where x is equal to 1 it is equal to 1 over 4 so it is this point over here that I will draw a red arrow right so that will be 1 over 4 and I know that from here I know that it is equal to 4 multiplied by pxy so I'm going to have 4 multiplied by 1 over 4 and that will be equal to 1 okay and this is where y is equal to 1 because when x is equal to 1 if you look at the point that x is equal to 1, the only possibility that we have is um, where y is equal to 1. So now I'm going to go to the point that x is equal to 2. 
So when x is equal to 2, you can see that we have two possibilities for y, y equal to 1 and y equal to 2. But for both of them, the joint PMF is equal to 1 over 8. So if I want to find probability, so where x is, when x is equal to 2, probability of y given 2, of y given 2, is equal to 1 over 4, or... Um, let me erase this. That is 4, not 1 over 4. So we have 4 multiplied by PXY of X and Y, which is 1 over 8. So that will be 1 over, will be equal to 1 over 2. So this is given, X, X is given as 2, and then Ys are equal to 1 or 2, because we have two different possibilities for Y. Now I'm going to do the term in which x is equal to 3. So I'm going to have probability of y given 3 of y given 3. And that is equal to 4 multiplied by the joint PMF of x and y where x is equal to 3. So if I go up here, when x is equal to 3, you will see that all the joint PMFs are equal to 1 over 12. So I can write this as 4 multiplied by 1 over 12, and that is equal to 1 over 3. So this is where y is equal to 1, 2, and 3. And the last possibility is when the x that is given is equal to 4. So then I'm going to have probability of y given 4, of y given 4, and that is 4 multiplied by, if I go up here, when x is equal to 4, all the joint PMFs of x and y is equal to 1 over 16. So I'm going to have 4 multiplied by 1 over 16, and I'm going to have 1 over 4, and y is equal to 1, 2, 3, or 4. Okay? So this was an example for conditional uh, PMF of a random variable but uh, given another random variable. Now the next section, the next part is the conditional PDF. So by conditional PDF, you know that I mean both my random variables are continuous random variables. So instead of having x and y as a discrete random variable, I'm going to have x and y both as continuous random variables. So we're going to have PDF instead of PMF. So all the other definitions will be the same. So fx, y, fx given y of x given y will be equal to the joint PDF of x, fx, y of x and y over. So this time we have y given. So we're going to have the marginal of y. And when I want to find fy given x of y given x, I'm going to have again the joint PDF of x and y over the marginal of x. Okay, so let's do one example. So I'm going to do example 7.60. Okay. So in this example, what we have is the joint PDF of x and y <coughs> defined as fxy of x and y is equal to 2 when y is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to x, and less than or equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. So what we want to find is it asks us to find for x between 0 and 1 we want to find the conditional PDF of fy given x of y given x so this question has two parts one of them is finding um, PDF of y given x, and one of them is finding the conditional PDF of x given y. So I'm going to do um, 
the conditional PDF of y given x and I will leave the second part for you to go over it yourself. All right, so let's start here. All right, so let's use the definition for the conditional PDF of y given x of y given x. So we know that we can use the joint PDF of x and y and divide it by fx of x. So now here, what I have to find is the marginal PDF of x. So I assume that you all know how to find the marginal PDF when you have a joint PDF. So that is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the joint PDF over all y's. So I'm finding the marginal of x, so we have to integrate over all y's. So let's go here. So my y's are changing between 0 and x. So the bounds of the integral will be from 0 to x of 2 dy. So that is equal to 2y from 0 to x, and that will be equal to 2x. So now what I have to find is I only have to divide the joint PDF by this marginal PDF. So let's go ahead and do that. So fx, fy given x of y given x is equal to, what was the joint PDF? It was equal to 2 at all x and y's and then over the marginal which i just found and that is 2x so i'm gonna be left with 1 over x as my conditional pdf of y given x so you can write it as fy given x of y given x is equal to 1 over x so the bounds will be 1 over x not 8 so the bounds will be the same as what we have for the joint PDF. We know that y is greater than 0, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 1, and 0 otherwise. So I'm going to leave the next part, that is the conditional of x given y, to you to go ahead and just find it out yourself. And if you have any questions, you can ask. So the last part of this section is... What if we have independent x and y? <clears throat> what if my two random variables are independent? So this is theorem 7.11. And it is when x and y are independent. So what if x and y are independent? So let's just write the definitions that I have for the conditional P, PMF and PDF and use the, all the properties that we know for independent random variables to find out the conditional PDF. So for the discrete random variables, when I have probability of x given y of x given y, that is equal to pxy of x and y, this is the general um, definition for the condition of PDF over PY of y. PY of y. Now, we know that when we have two independent random variables, their joint PMF is equal to the multiplication of their marginal PMFs. So this is equal to PX of x multiplied by PY of y over PY of y. So these two will be cancelled. So if I have an independent, two independent random variables, then the conditional probability of x given y will be equal to px of x. And with the same principle, when I have probability of y given x of y given x, that would be equal to py of y. And you can use the same method to prove it. Then for the continuous random variables, we're going to have the PDFs. So for two continuous random variables, x and y, the conditional PDF of x given y, of x given y, we know that the 
definition is saying that this is equal to the joint PDF of X and Y over the marginal of Y. Then when X and Y are independent, we're going to have FX of X multiplied by FY of Y as the joint PDF over FY of Y. And these two will be canceled, so I'm going to be end up with FX of X. Okay, and the same thing for FY given X of Y given X, which will be equal to FY of Y. All right, so let's go to the next section. So the next section is talking about the conditional expected value given a random variable. So what I'm going to do here is I will only use these two conditional uh, PMF and PDFs that we found in this section, only we need to find the expected value this time. So this is these two sections are all about when our given um, part given term is a random variable. So this is section 7.1, uh, 5, sorry. And it is conditional expected value. given a random variable. All right. So let's just go over the definitions for this part. So whenever I have a discrete <coughs> random variable, when I have two discrete random variables, then I have to use the PMF, obviously, and when I have um, continuous, I'm going to use the PDFs. So let's do, let, let's write the definition. So in discrete random variable, we want to find the expected value of a function of x and y given random variable of y. So the same exact method, the same exact um, definition that we used for expected value before, I'm going to use it here. So when I have discrete, this will be the sum of g of x and y, that is a function of x and y, multiplied by the PMF of x given y, x given y. Why did I use x given y? Because if you look at the expected value, y is the random variable that is given. So I have to use the PMF in which y is given. So the same thing for the continuous random variable. So if I have the expected value of a function of x and y, given again y, this will be equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the function of x and y, that is gxy, multiplied by the conditional PDF of x given y, again I use the one that is x given y, and what you need to use here is dx. So let's see why do I have to use dx here and why I don't have to use like dy. So let me just write this for the discrete part as well. x is inside sx. So do you remember that when we have, when we want to find, for example, fx given y of x given y, this is equal to the joint fxy of x and y over fy of y, right? So I have to use fy of y over here. When I want to find fy of y, which is the marginal of y, what do I have to do is I have to take the integral of the joint over all the x's. So that's why I'm using the x here. So if I had, for example, expected value of g of x, y given x, I would have dy instead of dx, okay? Now, what if I don't have, for example, a function of x and y? What if I, what if I have a special case in which the function of x and y is, for example, equal to x, just x? 
So let me write this special case over here. So if g of x and y is equal to x, then expected value of x given y will be equal to the sum again of x probability of x given y of x given y for all x's in sx and when i have a continuous random variable i'm going to have the expected value of x given y equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x fx given y of x given y dx okay so this was just the definitions for the conditional expected value of a function of x and y and where uh, when we have just for example a special case in which the function is equal to x or equal to y all right so this was all that we had in this section oh and we also have the iterated expectation so for the iterated expectation i am not expecting you to know this for the exam so we will skip this part and section 7.6 is the bivariate gaussian random variables for the condition of pdfs uh, since we didn't go over the bivariate gaussian random variables in in none of the chapters so i'm going to skip it for this chapter as well and this was all that we had for chapter 7 and i'm going to send the video for chapter 9 very soon